Hey you guys, the Doc is Hope here and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well and having a great week so far. So today I am going to be sharing with you guys a pattern review. I know it's been a little while since I've done a pattern review, but I just finished sewing up something that I absolutely love and I had to review it because I think it's a great pattern. And of course, I will show you guys how my jacket turned out. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up down below. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Hit that subscribe button so we can continue to hang out together and you guys can continue to catch these fun videos once a week. All right, you guys. So without further ado, let's get into this pattern review. All right, you guys. So this one is literally hot off the press. I just finished sewing this up and I absolutely love it and couldn't wait to share it with you guys. This is Simplicity's 90th Anniversary 8554. Bam. I shared this with you guys in my um, spring sewing plans. If you have not seen that yet, go back and watch that video. Um, but yeah, it's spring. Summer's right around the corner, so I knew that I didn't have but a little time to get this jacket done so that I could actually wear it before it's too hot here in Atlanta, which is probably next month. But I just had to make this. When I saw this pattern, I loved it from the beginning, and I had to figure out how to make it before fall or before next year. So I made it, and I love it. Love, 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 love it. Okay. So I ended up for this pattern using this fabric that I shared with you guys. Um, this is what I called a sage linen blend. Um, it is a linen cotton blend in this sage color, which I absolutely love. Um, my husband was in the military, so anything that's kind of like olive drab green, I absolutely love and I love military inspired looks and trench coats and things like that. So I had to, I had to go there <laughs> and it's linen. So it's actually going to stay like a cooler, lighter jacket for those like cool uh, spring and summer nights. So I just feel like this jacket was right on time for my wardrobe. So let's talk about this pattern, you guys. Let's talk about the pattern. So here we go. Uh, this is a Mrs. Miss Petite Online coat or jacket with sleeve variations and a tie belt, which I actually chose to sew up view A, which is what the model is wearing here. I just absolutely love how this looks, y'all. Um, then you have view B, which is the shorter version of the jacket. And then you have you C, which has like little sleeve bells here, and it's much shorter. It's not really a trench. Um, it's more of just a jacket. So the three good options there, but this one I absolutely loved. Those side slits and everything else was just on point for me. So um, your suggested fabrics again for this pattern are chalet, chambray, crepe, soft, lightweight linen types, silky types so of course i chose a linen type which ooh, love but you got a lot of options there depending on the season depending on how you feel uh, for your notions you needed some thread and believe it or not y'all i didn't have thread. <laughs> i feel like i end up getting all my notions zippers buckles buttons and then i get home and i'm like girl you didn't get any thread. You didn't get any thread. I think because I've been going to a few other places for fabric lately, um, I've been going to Fine Fabric and I've been going to Gale K Fabric, um, not necessarily Joanne as much lately. So I think that's why I have not um, been getting my thread because, you know, Joanne has this whole section where it's just thread and different colors of thread. So I think that's why I've been forgetting my thread. But it was okay. It worked out because I had a thread, which is actually, I don't know if y'all can see this green back here, um, in my thread stash that I already had. So it actually worked out well, thank God, because I was like, I can't sew the jacket. I don't have the thread, but where there's a will, there's a way. And 
Don't you know God will make a way? All right, y'all. So here we go. Um, oh, let me share with you the line drawings for this pattern, just in case you have not seen them. A here, which I sew. This is the back of the jacket. B, C, and then this is the belt here. Um, there are 15 pieces total to this pattern. So you guys, I want to share with you, I actually lengthened my belt. Um, this pattern actually went up to a size 22. I sewed up an 18, but I actually cut out the 22 size belt only because I love a, a lengthy belt. I don't want a short stubby belt. So <laughs> I'll show it to you guys. And I love how it gives me the, the freedom to tie a nice bow and still have a little length left over. I don't like a short belt. So just keep that in mind if you're planning to sew this up. Maybe you want to go with the longest belt that you can, maybe. So also for sewing up this jacket, you guys, you are going to need some interfacing. Um, you're going to need two and an eighth yard of 20 inch to 25 inch lightweight fusible interfacing. Um, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but I was on there in my stories talking about all the interfacing that had to be done. I don't like interfacing, y'all. I don't. There are a few parts to sewing that I could do without, and interfacing is one of them. I love the results. I love the thickness and the stiffness of the fabric and the dimensions and all those great things, but the actual act of interfacing not a fan not so much of a fan so definitely um you'll need your interfacing just know that you're gonna do a few things with that let me know down below in the comments y'all do you like interfacing or could you pass on interfacing so i will share with you the cutting layout now uh, for your fabric and your pattern pieces so again i sewed up view a which is the coat um, I needed a, well, I had a 60 inch width fabric and I sewed up a size 18, like I said. So here we go. This is the layout that I ended up using and I love this. I haven't had an old school layout in a long time, y'all. And what I mean by that is right sides together, fold it in half, cut out all your pieces. <laughs> so lately I've been having a lot of double fold, Fold both ends to the center, um, fold in half, right sides together, and then open up on one side of fabric, cutting. And this right here was a breath of fresh air for me because it's been a long time since I have seen an old fashioned layout here. So um, you see all of your pieces here. Um, we've got most of them on the right side of the pattern, and then you've got a couple on wrong side of the pattern to cut out. Um, I will say that I like to check off my pieces as I um, cut them out or as I place them on the fabric just so that I know that I've cut everything out, I haven't forgotten anything, and I have enough fabric. So that's a tip for you guys if you, if you want a tip. Um, also, your interfacing layout here. So you're going to interface pieces five, six, seven, and eight on a single thickness of interfacing. So you want your bumpy side facing up under these pieces that you're cutting out. Look at all that interfacing, y'all. Number seven, that was a beast. <laughs> that was a whole entire beast, y'all. But it's okay, because in the end, you're going to get a nice jacket that you're going to wear forever. So um, as far as sizing goes, I will say I feel like I could have gotten away with a 16 um, just because the jacket itself is a little on the larger side. I do like oversized outerwear because I feel like it gives you the opportunity to layer and it also kind of looks a little more modern, but I do feel like I could have gotten away with a 16. So maybe if you're thinking of sewing your true size, you might go down a size, look into that, um, just FYI. Also, as far as sewing up this pattern, I felt like the steps um, and instructions were pretty straightforward, pretty um, easy to follow. 
no major curveballs there. There are actually a total of 34 steps here. Um, not all of them will you need. Um, I actually use steps one. Yeah, I actually skip step two and three because on the other two jackets, there's an overlay. Now, I'll tell y'all a little secret. I was going to do an overlay. I really loved how the overlay looked, which is, of course, this piece right here under the lapel, that overlay piece. This jacket doesn't have it, but this does, and this does. Um, I was going to do an overlay, but your girl ran out of fabric. That's the real truth. When I was cutting it, I was like, oh, I could add the overlay on to this jacket, and oh, how cute that would be. But I didn't have enough fabric. When I, I cut out the piece for the overlay, and when I went to lay everything out, I was like, oh, no overlay, no overlay for me. So um, if I make this again, I will be putting the overlay in. So just keep in mind that if you are going to sew up view A and you wanna add in that overlay, girls, get yourself a little bit more fabric at the store, okay? I told you so. All right, so back to the instructions. Um, I skipped two and three because I did not do an overlay. I uh, then picked up on step four. Uh, let's see here. I kept going through step 14. All right, so this jacket has pockets. It also has um, carriers, which y'all, I don't like carriers. I'm not a fan. I like carriers, but I don't like sewing carriers. And then when I saw this, I was like, Get your carrier hat on, girl, because you got to sew these carriers. And I did. It turned out pretty good, I think. Um, let's see. I skipped steps 15. I'm telling you, you're skipping a lot of steps. I skipped steps 15 all the way to 23. And that's where we pick up. And we're actually putting our carriers together and our belt. And we're finishing everything. So we're hemming. We're um, understitching our facing, which of course is gonna allow your lapel to lay right and turn in the way it's supposed to, your facing to turn in the way it's supposed to. Um, and then of course your side slits. slits. So I did have to sew um, hems on my side slits just to finish those off. That did take a little bit of time, but it was okay. Um, and I think for me, the hardest part of this pattern, honestly, was the the hem. The, the, the bottom hem of this jacket was a, a little bit interesting because I'll tell you guys what it says here. It says, mark length, mark depth of hem, trim evenly. To me, that was very vague. Mark length, what length, where? Mark depth of hem. What, what is that? Now, if I'm missing something, let me know, but that didn't give me much guidance. Normally they'll say, you know, cut fabric one and a half inches from raw edge, uh, turn up whatever, whatever inches, but no, very vague in that one part. That's the only, only issue that I have with this pattern is step 29 because I was like, okay, I guess I'm just gonna have to wing it. And I did, and it didn't turn out so great in the beginning. And I'll show you guys the video of a little bit of that process of me talking about it not being even and then having to go back and make adjustments and all that drama. So I'll show you guys some behind the scenes of that stuff. Hey y'all, so I'm finishing up this trench coat well jacket made of linen and oh I'm so annoyed with this front part so it's not even so so at first this part was longer than this part so I cut this part and now this part is shorter than this part so I am working on figuring this out today 
and then I will pretty much be done with this project. All right, y'all, I did some cutting and some measuring and some adjustments, and this is much better. That's pretty much spot on, so I'm happy with that. All right, you guys, so this is how my jacket turned out, my trench coat and my linen. Uh, see what I mean by the longer belt here? This actually allowed me to tie this nice bow in the front and it's not too short. And going down, look at my hem, y'all. Ooh, look at how even that is. It wasn't that way at first, but thank you, Lord. All right, so let me show you guys around. Got my sleeves here. I like how they looked rolled better than unrolled. Um, just to me, it's a more casual look. Uh, again, the finishing on my um, side splits here. Take you around the other side. I got my lapels nice and done. Other side. And then I'll show you the back. Here we go. This is the back, belted, and my hem in the back. All right, guys, that's my jacket. But in the end, I figured out how to even it out. A lot of measuring, a lot of basting, a few cuts, a lot, well, I won't say a lot of cutting, a few cuts, but I did figure out how to even it out where I'm happy with it. And overall, I think the jacket turned out really, really well. So I will say that uh, when it comes to your hem, make sure that you are ready, <laughs> make sure that you are paying attention and make sure you're measuring things out to make it even on the first try because mine was not. So you guys, I like this pattern overall. If you're looking for a cute, pretty quick, nice lightweight jacket to sew, I would recommend this one for sure. Um, I would give this pattern a B plus only because of that one step with the hem that was like, what are y'all talking about? But other than that, you're good to go. This is a really cute jacket. Uh, I think it's a trench, so it's one of those timeless patterns that you can have in your collection. If you sew it in a neutral, you can wear it with a bunch of different things. And if you sew it in a print, you can still wear it with a whole bunch of different things. <laughs> Maybe not as many. Y'all know I love print, but you can wear it. This jacket is very versatile, if you ask me. So definitely pick this pattern up. Simplicity 8554 if you have not. Hopefully this pattern review was helpful for you if you're deciding whether you should buy this pattern, if you're deciding whether you should sew up this pattern, if you already have it. Hopefully these um, tips and, and information about this pattern has helped your decision. All right, you guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, I enjoyed making it for you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up down below. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Hit that subscribe button so we can continue to hang out together and you guys can catch these fun videos once a week. All right, you guys. Well, until next time, I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you later.